I'm the math coach here at Renning Muhlenberg Career and Technology Center, and this is the very mini webinar on, for Autobody for the PLC session. So um, this is going to be a very short webinar, 10 minutes. We're going to share a few things. I didn't get a lot of uh, responses from Autobody. I got a couple. Uh, what, I would, what I would challenge if you haven't turned anything in, my challenge would be if you could turn in the five questions, just the five math questions, I'd really like to make a great book out of this, and so so would um, Meter, to for everybody to use. So if you haven't turned them in yet, and you do listen to this, please consider just turning in the five questions. That would be great. Um, but anyway, so let's start. Again, this is Autobody, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the. Sorry, I'm just moving my screen. I'm going to share everybody's auto body that send in everybody's different lessons and, and go through them and, and give you some great pointers. Whoever turned things in, I think the lessons look great, and, and I thank you for all that. I haven't, if you've turned in the five questions, sometimes I use the questions, sometimes I don't, but we will be using those as we go on. So what I want to start with is Jared Wheeler from Lenape. Um, he turned in um, a mixing ratio, basically, lesson plan. I think it's really neat. It, actually, it's more of the five questions, but what I like is, and I want to go through this, when you're creating lessons, it's really neat how he put the directions. Um, you must complete questions one and two and complete answers. Three and four, you must do the lab and then complete the answer. So I really like how he has this set up. It's not just math problems, it's actually math problems in context, which is nice because mixing ratios is something that you want to see. So the scenario I liked, a ratio shows the relative size of two or more values. He's relating it to math, great. Um, and he, he explains the different ways that ratios look, um, and he gives an example. And actually the example is very much just a math example, and that's, you know, to a point one boy to three girls, and now he starts in with doing the mixing the primer, the surface, and, and different things with mixing the different parts of the, the coats of the paint that is for auto body. And I really like the way he asks questions. If you notice number three, he asks if the primer is three parts, what's the one part? He asks, what number are we going to pour the primer to? What number are we going to pour the calyx to? He actually leads the questions, which sometimes with students, it's really good that they do that because it helps them see where the things are coming from and where the different things work through. Um, another one that I thought was uh, really good, and I love, I do like these T-charts. Some of them are a little more difficult to understand, but if you get into writing them, and that's what's really nice, and seeing them, uh, John sent this one in, and, and this is piecemeal, but again, as I said in the nursing session, all of these things will be in full form out on the web. So you can get all these somewhere along the line, either in the new toolbox that Meter's creating, or from me, however you can get these, we will give you full lessons for all of these. And, and they are available, so they are. It, this is great resources for you to take that are already created that you can use. Again, this is the auto technology measure wheel, tile, axle, flange, and hub run out. And basically, again, we have the vocabulary, we have the program formulas, the example, which is really good because they're always looking at a size hole diameters and. The smallest to least, I'm still seeing these on the Keystone exams in the regular academic math. So this is all things that are really just work well within the auto body program and also within the math curriculum as well. So you can see if you haven't looked at these T-charts, you can see there's great problems. There's nine problems on here. Three of them, even if you don't want to use all the academic ones, three of them are program related, which really are great for your program, and if you need some kind of math problem at the beginning of your session, if, if it's required at your school, it's a great opportunity to use these. One thing we do here is uh, we created 
an auto body a repair order. Now, a lot of you do things online or on uh, programs, but it's great for students to start to just fill these out. And you can change these. The only thing that's really geared towards our, my school here, it says RMCTC auto body and the date and the address. Um, I'm going to give you this. I think I have it created in an Excel form. And you can have it. You can change the labor rate, whatever you want. But what we do in our shop is we actually have them start looking at invoicing and marking up items. And we pull things, I pull things directly from the internet. Because that's where a lot of this part buying and things are being, being done anymore is actually on the internet. So what I did was I pulled these. And not only do you do the math on these, but you can talk about different things. Like if you notice up at the top, the list price is crossed out. What is the list price? Why are you paying the $277.98? Um, what is ground shipping? What, what, you know, it's free. You know, what does the low price guarantee mean? All of these things are mathematical vocabulary that the students need to know as well. You know, even the, the, the double auto parts, you know, does that have a relation to how much you're going to pay or what you're buying? So, and what's neat is the pictures come with it. You can just say um, a door shell and give a price, but if you actually put the picture with it, now you're not only dealing with mathematics, you're dealing with um, things that they need to know out in the workforce and what they look like. So we, we let them invoice and let them run through the invoices based on pictures from the internet. The other thing that uh, we do here, and mixing paints is the big, big thing, and actually, to be honest, it's a very, it's an area mathematically that students really struggle with, with these ratio and proportions and how if you increase one thing, it, it changes the mixture of the other things. <clears throat> so I have a very basic PowerPoint that we go through. And I, I like to do a lot of let's show how to do it, let's work together, so the guided practice, and then let's put it to work and see what you can do. What I did was I took pictures, and I have all the pictures on the PowerPoint, and then I put this on the back of all the pictures, and I cut the pictures up. And I grouped them based on them having to put the pictures together, tape them back, turn it over. <clears throat> and actually now they had to solve this whole puzzle, not only just one ratio, but a different ratio, and given different things based on what you were doing. And again, it, it opens up the opportunity for you to add quart conversions to ounces. You know, you teach all these things separately. But now here's the ability to say, OK, now I've got to go from ounces to quarts. I've got to find out a dollar. I've got to know that it's got to stick with the Ford bumper. You might have them look up what the Ford bumper looks like, you know, just to get that whole idea. The other thing I thought I'd put on here is just a very basic thing that we use here. And I'm going to tell you the fractions aren't in order, but that's not how they come up. It's actually a ruler guide through the 16th. And what it does is they fill them out. When, when you go through the PowerPoint, it all pops up. They fill them out. And actually, a lot of students like it because they can see the reduction in fractions or the you know reducing fractions. Some of them don't understand that 1 half is 8 16 And some of them who are having trouble with the ruler can count the lines to 8 16 because a lot of rulers are divided into 16 and then divide them and see that, oh, OK, 8 of those lines is 8 16 but that's the same. I see the big line, and that's a half. So what we do here is a lot of times I'll teach it in the beginning of the year. They might carry this sheet around for a while. And eventually, they throw it out. And that's what you know. That's the, the kids are like, oh, we want to throw it out. And I'm like, that's the goal is you want to get rid of this sheet. But it's, it's an easy way to learn it. Um, also, using some of these basic things, this is not a hard math problem. But um, Mr. Johnston and I worked together on this. And a damaged car is said to have sway. So in other, in other words, you're getting into these vocabulary words that are definitely things you can talk about in your classroom. But all you're looking at is the difference between two measurements. So you're really subtracting fractions. But it has the whole program feel to it. The other thing I like is what is the difference between these two measurements. Students see this, and this is becoming more and more prevalent on SATs, on a lot of different things, and they don't know what, 
words like difference mean. So if you can introduce just very basic things greater than this or less than, writing the words and saying, what does that look like? That's a great thing, too. Um, the fraction thing, and, and I moved quickly through that. Uh, one thing that's neat is I'll cut these panels apart, and there are three pages of fractions. And one of the activities we begin with is just seeing if they can order themselves from greatest to least fraction-wise. And sometimes as they get better, you pull the fractions out. I have a whole panel of them that you can pull fractions out and throw decimals in because I know there's a lot of conversion between those two that, and they don't see all that all the time. Um, again, here's some more of those ideas of trying to do this. The math worksheet site, which I talked about on the last webinar, has a lot of great worksheets that you can go through, and I'll show you. And again, I have these saved as well, but you can download these in a heartbeat. Again, just for you, the math worksheet site, again, has great, great activity sheets. Micrometer sheets that are already done. You just have to print them out. They have an answer key with them. Um, the veneer micrometer, you know, they have all kinds of different things, and I'm showing you all the measurement things that you can get from here. Now, this one is a paid site. The, the math aids is not, but even it's, I think, 15 a year, so it's not an expensive pain site for all, all everything you get on it. Um, again, headlights on a car. I have quite a few of these completed. Now, this, I have the answer key on there. But the answer key is actually on the back of these. So I think I have about 15 or 20 of these created already where it's the question and the answer key. And again, it gives you the opportunity to teach math in your program. Uh, one of the nice things is you can bring pictures in. This is what it looks like. This is actually what fuel line antifreeze comes in container-wise. So now you're, like I said, you're showing things exactly the way they are in your shop and why are you going to need to know that. Um, one of the last things that I'm almost done is uh, ratio and proportion. This is a great resource for paint mixing. Uh, paint mixing itself is on the third page of this whole um, PDF file, but it goes through ratio and proportion. It's a really nice paint mixing problem that is actually in this Math for Elementary Teachers, which actually, if you think about it, this, this is a little bit higher on the elementary, and especially when we get down to some of the ratios with the mixing of paints. But it, it's a great application, and like I said, the entire PDF file is saved on the website for the PLC, and how they're going to show that is to be determined, but you will all have access to copies of this. Um, the other thing we do, one other thing that I'm going to show you before I end, is uh, payroll and checkbook skills in AutoBody. Um, we have, I have created a, an activity where you have the checkbook register, you're given what you need to do, you come up with a check, you have rent payments, you have invoice payments. If you look uh, at the right-hand corner of this, you'll see copies of invoices that you can Physically, they, can, they have to find the dollar amounts on the invoice. You're not just saying that the electric bill is, is 100 bucks. You're saying, look at that electric bill and tell me where you're finding it. I mean, this is real world stuff. This is stuff you can use whether you're going to be an auto body person out owning your own business or if you're just going to college. You're going to have to be able to read invoices and take the information from them, not just get a number and you put it in. So um, again, that'll all be available to you as well. So basically the end of this is um, if you watch both of the recordings, the Math Mysteries and this mini webinar, uh, on the YouTube channel there's the link. You complete and submit a webinar response form. If you haven't seen that yet, I would think that they will send out another copy of that just for you. There is a new due date for that. It's May 9th, 2014. We realize that all of you are very busy with what you're doing. NACI has just pretty much ended. Um, you're getting ready for graduation, different things for that, finishing out your year. So we have extended the deadline. If you have any questions, just give Jennifer Grams a call or email her, and we're in good shape. And I'd like to thank these people for submitting lesson plans, Steve Johnson, Jared Wheeler, and John Lyman, thank you very much. 
if you have any questions, you see all of our emails down there. We're all here to help you out. So have a good day, and thank you very much.